I have the wonderful JJ, Justin Kimball. Justin and I met not too long ago. We actually, yeah, um, we actually met pre-quarantine, right? That's I think it started in February, mid-February. Yeah. yeah. So him and I worked together at Rebel Republic in Hermosa, um, and I invited him onto my show because he is a fellow mover. He's been all over the world. He's done many different things from being in the military to traveling and being a stunt actor for Hawaii Five-O mm -hmm. and now coming back to LA. So JJ, tell us yes. a little recap about you. Well, I guess we'll start uh, with my move to L uh, to Hawaii yeah, in 2009. Wow. Okay. So um, I grew up in a military family moving around a lot, which kind of I think helped set the precedent right. for me being that way as an adult. But uh, because of that, I was homeschooled my whole life. Oh, really? And so because of that, I was really close with my siblings, and especially my little brother. So how many siblings do you have? I'm the oldest of three. Uh, Same here. We're all about eight, 16 months apart, so we're real close in age. And me, it's me and my sister and my brother. It's me and my brother about three years apart. Oh, so you guys are all so, probably super close. Yeah, so we were, we were growing up, but then we all... Separate. Literally, poof, we're gone at 18. I was in, went to the military, my brother went to the military, my sister went to college out of state, got married. And so, uh, anyway, point is, in 2009, I had been out of the military for a few years now. My brother was just getting out of the military. We wanted to reconnect as adults. Okay. And we were like, we were unattached at the time. Were and you we and your like, brother the same... Field in no, military? no, he was in the Air Force doing IT work, and I was uh, in the Marine Corps doing finance stuff. So Damn. different fields, okay. completely. But uh, at, so 2009, he was getting out, and we wanted to like re kind of reconnect mm -hmm. as adults, and so we were like, you know what, let's let's move to a city we've never been to before together, and just see what happens. So we start. We were looking all over. We lived at LA. We looked at like Sydney. Uh, we lived in New Where was York. like the main spot you lived in? Like up to growing, that point? Up, well, up. I, there was no main spot because my father was military, was so every few years we moved. I was born in San Diego. Okay. But, I mean, as a child I lived in, I lived in California, Washington, Germany, Massachusetts, Texas, Arizona. Jesus all growing Christ. up. That's, that's, a, that's yeah. a whole lot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So yeah, anyway, that's, that, I that's, understand why homeschooling was the way. Yeah, to go. and then that like that mentality and lifestyle has perpetuated itself throughout my entire life. Mm -hmm. I've always just kind of been on the move, uh, like you, Momo, on the move. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, back to two thousand nine. He randomly gets a job offer in Honolulu, nice. uh, working for the DoD. Uh, because he had a clearance from the military, so he was no. like, he was like, hey, want to? I got a job in Honolulu. Uh, we've never been there. We hadn't even been thinking about it. He was like, want to just move to Hawaii and see what happens. So at that time, well, that's fucking awesome. Yeah, at that time, I was working in the swim world because I had been a swimmer most of my life. Mm -hmm. So I was coaching like swim teams and doing swim lessons and stuff. Right. And I had figured that I'm sure I could do that in Hawaii. So we all we moved to Hawaii summer 2009, and boom. Uh, were there for 10 years, mm -hmm. 2009 to 2019. Literally to the month, they were there June of 2009. June of 2019 is when I stayed in LA. Last summer I stayed in LA, yeah, I didn't go back to Hawaii. So. Wow, so then what were you doing from June to February? Were you like living in that same area? Or? No, I was working at the proper hotel in Santa Monica. Okay. That's nice. the first job we got in LA, bartending over there. And then it came to me. Then, <laughs> then I found her. No, um, then I wanted to get out of Santa Monica, Venice. I was like, I didn't know LA, so everyone's yeah. like, Santa Monica, Venice. So I got a job up there, I was living up by that side, and then I, after yeah, a few months, I was like... Yeah, that's all I thought when I came out here from New York, too, and then I was actually staying up in the Valley at first, and Ooh. I was like, this is interesting. Ooh. But then when I moved to the South Bay, I was like, now this is like what I ideally pictured California. Yeah. It's like palm trees, surfers, beat, like... That's totally. where the beaches are. That's exactly the, the, the uh, what I arrived at. Yeah. And uh, yeah, South Bay. If, you, if you're in LA, South Bay. And I was, it's funny you said the Valley. I remember like that the the week I came to LA, and my buddy was like, "Just don't go to the Valley." 
it's cheap up there, but don't do it. You say you'll get sucked up there and get stuck in the valley, and yeah, like, you don't want to be up there. there none, none of them want to come down here, and I get it. Like Hollywood and all that stuff is like closer mm -hmm. up there, but no, South Bay is South Bay. the way to go. It's the best part of LA, I think. Yeah. Palos Verdes, South Bay, right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so anyway. then in your ten years in Hawaii, yeah. you ended up doing stunt work. Like, I did. tell me about yeah. that. Why did you start? Why did you decide stunt work? Well, I, I, it was actually, uh, I was guided to that path by okay. a, an anonymous human. Anonymous? Yes. Okay. So I'll give you the story. In Hawaii, 2009, Hawaii 5 starts shooting season one, 2010. Mm -hmm. at, at the time, I was working at a private uh, fitness club in an uh, area of Oahu called Hawaii Kai, mm -hmm. kind of a higher end area. Uh, they had a swim team, a bunch of swim lessons. I was working there. Uh, they also had like a uh, bunch of tennis locals and pros and people that played tennis there. Okay. So one of the ladies that played tennis there, there her and her husband, an older lady, uh, came up to me one day as I was standing by the pool teaching lessons and she's like, uh, you know, was talking to me and was like, basically, have you seen the new Hawaii Five-0? And you look just like the guy on that show, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Scott Kahn, which I've never been told that before. And I, but it's very true. I look as I have no idea who this guy very is, much so alike. But I'll anyway, take your word for it. She kept... She, they she, hired she, you. She was like, send your picture in, you should send. You should try to go work on the show. I had no interest in the field, in the business at all. Mm -hmm. I was a surfer. I was like, swim water. I would I would go to work barefoot and shirtless. I mean, yeah, this is... I'm not trying it, to dress up. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, finally one day, uh, after months, she came in with her camera and with her husband's blazer, and she's like the song, I'm going to take your picture and I'm going to send it in. So, and I'm not kidding, I, we did, I literally wow. she took my picture, she sent it in. Some things do get handed to me. <laughs> three, day, three days later, the casting, the, her name is Joanna, mm -hmm. uh, she did all the, she did all like the background and stand in and photo double casting mm -hmm. for the show, all like the local hires. Yeah. Uh, she called me, had me come in and was like, God, you know, like, I haven't had anybody like as close to Scott is you. And so this was season two by now. And uh, and was this guy, guy like doing crazy stunts though? Like that? So, so here, well, here's how it started. So I don't know if you know, each, when you're on a, a larger production, there, uh, every, every position has a potential for three double. There's a stand oh, in, a stand in, yeah. a photo double, and a, and a stunt double. So the stand in generally just needs to be same height and weight skin tone doesn't need to look like the guy oh this photo double needs to be very similar in appearance and everything to the guy yeah. and the stunt double doesn't really have to look that much like me they're just same build just but action. it just has to be the ability to perform the stunt mm -hmm. so anyway when initially when i got when i got called in on season two there was already stunt doubles there's already stand in they just needed a photo mm -hmm. double which is someone that looks really like the guy photo doubles are used whenever there's a shot that maybe doesn't see his face okay maybe he's typing something on a phone you just see his arm maybe he's looking at something you just see the back of his head and so like ear. still shots and all that. uh usually they were all shot in what's called insert units okay. so as the production's running through an episode they'll drop shots that they could didn't get because they didn't have time we right. use the photo double on an insert unit so then they have an insert unit day where they go back and shoot all these pickup shots wow. that they left behind that they didn't get it didn't involve the actor's face mm -hmm. and this has to do with uh episodics are always shot on a fast-paced schedule you know what i mean yeah. eight out seven to eight day episodes so you're getting 40 minutes in eight days 40 minutes of screen time in eight right. days you're moving through fast locations are pending if they they're not going to do another two hour setup to get a shot of his arm on a phone when we can just throw that to insert unit, they'll get it in a week from now and wow. shoot all those shots. You know what I mean? So would you so, work like an, one whole day? And so initially, yeah, shots? on season two, I was just hired for that. So okay. basically I would just work insert units mm -hmm. and I would we would get all the pickup shots of things. So end of season two, summer, they go on their hiatus, uh, April, May, June. So they mm -hmm. shoot July through March. Okay. So June, end of June's coming around. I'm, I remember it. I was distinctly I was at the beach, and I got a call from the casting department. They're like, "Look, we want you to come in 
full time next season, be his stand in and and photo double. Just be all of it. So you would just be on set every day. He's on set and be his stand in. So then I, I agreed, and that was starting season three. When I started full time. Mm -hmm. Then about halfway through season three, the stunt director, uh, so stunt coordinator Jeff Caliente, who is an amazing stunt coordinator, he was uh, he was actually. Uh, You know Brandon Lee? I think Brandon Lee, the one that died making the uh, crow. No. He got shot on set. He got shot on set? By a blank. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard that no, story. No, I before. did not yeah, hear yeah. that story. So you know the movie The Crow? I've heard of I it. I believe it's Brandon Lee, uh, which is Bruce Lee's son. He died on set during his stunt. But anyway, our stunt coordinator, Jeff Cadena, was his stunt double. Oh, shit. And anyway, he was like the stunt coordinator for 24. He won all kinds of... Uh, they want some awards, awards and stuff. And stuff. You know, he's a really good stunt coordinator. But anyway, he liked, I, I just looked so much like Scott. Uh, even though there was another stunt guy already, he started giving me some of the stunts too. Mm -hmm. And so then during season three, what would happen is he had a main stunt guy. I was kind of like the backup stunt guy and then full time uh, photo, photo and double stand. stand so then that went on for seasons three through eight okay I did that that is fucking cool yeah so like they have these stand-ins and these doubles but they don't want to pay them the real price of having the the main guy well I'm sure. or like how did why it's not why actually like that oh so i'll give you a perfect I'll, I'll, I'll give you a rundown okay let's say we're at crew call right mm -hmm. first scene of the day everybody's there 6 a.m on set mm -hmm. first ad all right Bring the actors in, let's run a rehearsal. Drive with the director, director of photography, yeah. gaffer, all the stand-ins, hair and makeup, everybody watch this rehearsal. As long as it's not like an intimate scene, which will do private right. rehearsals sometimes, but usually on episodic shows, there's not, not scenes like that, so right. everyone can watch the rehearsals. So we watch the rehearsal, maybe this could take this could take five minutes. If it's an easy scene. Oh, this I know. I've take, been on set, and that shit takes forever. It could but take I've an hour. I've been on set yeah. with like the stand-ins and the doubles and right. All that. Well, so we're like the part two of it. So after the rehearsal okay. and everybody's seen what's gonna happen, mm -hmm. we send back. It's called first team, you know, the actors. Yeah. Send back first team to the trailers. Get touched up hair, and makeup, make sure we're right. Then while they're there, the scene needs to get lit. And all the cameras need to get set, the movements need to be, the marks need to get laid on the ground. So then that's where the standards come in. They've been watching the rehearsal, they do everything the actors did in the scene. Mm -hmm. oh, I think this could take an hour too to right. light the scene. Right. All the angles, the focus. Okay, so then that's set. All right. Thank you, second. We were called second team, mm -hmm. the standards. Thank you, second team. We step off, mm -hmm. bring in first team, they step in, everything's ready to they go, and action, boom. So like, if the actors had to stand there for an hour, by the time they and then act, shoot the good and then stuff, do fifty yeah. takes, and then stand there for another hour, the like energy's they, not the same. They wouldn't be all right. They need yeah. to like Take go worry about way. their lines and yeah. figure out their shit while we're just standing there. Look this way. Look that way. Walk yeah. to that one. Walk back to this one. You know, ten times in a row. Yeah, so I've been back around right. and I'm just like, this shit fucking sucks. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> this is just a lot of waiting around, and that's usually a lot of the acting world it's just like that's waiting it. around until you are the person like the lead that they need to shoot yeah, yeah. and what people don't realize about film the film world is like it's just grueling it is long ass days yep. of doing the same shit over and over and over again and then like and then you, and then you forget about it you move right on to the next one mm -hmm. it's crazy yeah so what's the craziest stunt that you had to do Wow, well, <laughs> so fortunately for me, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've watched the show. I've never watched the show. <laughs> so one, one and two on the show, there's McGarrett, he is the main guy, number one. He's, okay. he's Navy SEAL, he's a badass. He's so a he does the craziest shit on the and show. And then my guy, Scott, number two, his character was a New Jersey transplant to Hawaii, always in a buttoned up shirt, okay. never trying to get his hands dirty. Okay. So fortunately for me, the nature of the stunts that I predominantly had to do were not that difficult. Okay. Just because his character. But it's cool to say, so, I am a stunt though. Yeah, <laughs> so like the majority of what I was doing would be like gunplay, uh, chases, 
Riding around in cars mm -hmm. that were sliding and shit. Right. Riding around in helicopters. Did you ever drive the vehicles? Drove sliding around? the vehicles. Okay, that's cool. Uh, that's the furious action. So yeah, it was a lot more, a lot more of like guns and mm -hmm. like shooting and like chasing. That kind of stuff is what I did a lot. Yeah. That's cool. Um, the only like stunt, well I didn't do any stunt double, but I have done like fight choreography scenes with um, John Hayden. I don't know if mm -hmm. you, you know who John Hayden uh -huh. is, but he was um, the father in Daredevil, yeah. like the boxer father. He came in a couple times and, and coordinated I, the scene that you were in. Well, he did workshops oh, um, fine. where yeah. I went to college in New Falls, uh -huh. uh, New Falls, New York. Um, that was super fun. I learned how to like pretend like my face was getting slammed into like something and make it seem like I got hurt. So right. basically, real quick, it's like someone will grab you from like the back of your head and then you just like grab their hand and kind of just like make the motion and then like when you slam into something, kind of like slam it with your hands and then like bring it back to your face and you're like, oh! So it's like, whoosh, whoosh. So like you basically hurt yourself. When, that's yeah. a little one-on-one. If you ever want to know yeah. it a little bit, there it is. Um, okay, you so. You get banged up a bit. So you did stunt yeah. work. So yeah, so and then what, then what happens what is, is Hawaii? Hawaii is a very, uh, the film community mm -hmm. is, small and everyone knows each other right so because what happens is productions aren't based in hawaii they're based in la or new york and this is all in honolulu predominantly okay. they'll shoot in Kauai. okay like what was that a tropical thunder remember that one that, that shot in Kauai. some will go big island and shoot but predominantly 80 percent shoots on oahu yeah. Just because the infrastructure is there, the roads, you can bring in the equipment. Right. There's already preset like areas that people shoot all the time. You know, like the mountains you see in Jurassic Park. You know, so many movies get shot in yeah. that area of Oahu if you want yeah, big mountains and stuff. Jurassic Park. Areas. And then there's roads to get the equipment there. So like the infrastructure on Oahu is there it's for the production. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then if they want to be a bit exotic, they'll. Because then remember they kind of fly everything, fly everything into Oahu. Everything gets imported in Hawaii. And then if yeah. they want to jump on island, then they have to move everything again from Oahu to another island. They've no, already moved it from LA, so it's like even more expensive. So they'll yeah. tend to just shoot on Oahu, yeah. where everything comes. So that makes sense. So, but then, but then anyway, there's only like three or four casting directors on Oahu, mm -hmm. so you get to know them all because yeah. you end up all working on all the same movies right. that come through. Uh, and they always try to local hire because, especially things like stand-ins, photo double, stunt you guys, just want small to parts. Know what they're doing already. But they, if they fly them in from LA or New York, then they got to pay them per diem. They got to put them up in the hotel. It's more expensive for the production. Right, right, so right. a lot of that stuff they try to local hire. Mm -hmm. So there. So after, you know, after a season or two on a walk on Five O, I, I was just kind of known as, oh, is there a blonde Five Nine actor in the movie or around there? Get JJ. Can double and JJ can stand in for. Oh, that's great. So then I started sure working on fun. Plenty of work then. And I did. I worked on all, all, all the movies that came to Oahu those 10 years. I doubled uh, Nick Jonas and David Spade and a bunch of different guys. And so it was just kind of worked in that Hawaii niche market wow. of film that happens over there. I didn't even know there was a Hawaii niche market until now. There's a lead there. For the past 20 years, there's always been a show there because there was Lost there for seven years. Right. Then there was Hawaii Five O there for 10 years. Mm -hmm. That's 17 years right there. I think there was even a show going before Lost. Now that Hawaii Five O just in and Magnum PI is there, still right. going. So there's always an episodic there all the time. And then there's at least three to five movies a year that come through. So there's like work for the industry workers over there. Wow. Yeah. I'm gonna have to move to Hawaii for a little bit. <laughs> Um, okay, so... But now with COVID, I don't know. Nobody's shooting, all those guys aren't working, I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, well... They're all in unemployment. Luckily, I've been getting some things, so stay tuned. Um, I, yeah, well, they just started picking up again, and I've literally been so bored after, like, work or before work, I'm just, like, applying 20 things a day. I don't have so wait, productions are actually shooting right now? Yeah, a lot of them are, they're doing COVID testings, but, like, you can't be on set until they, you show them the results, oh, like, shit. that you are negative. Um, wow. What else? Or they're just, like... I did one wow. shoot so far, it was like a motion still um, uh -huh. for American Airlines, but that was early 
when like COVID was like like in the middle of everything and I was like you guys are really shooting and at the airport like because they wanted to promote that like Safety. they are still flying but right. they everything is still safe so everything was like six feet apart and like every we're wearing masks the whole time and so they need pictures to promote and advertise so now it's like I got um some guy that I got casted for before quarantine happened, they just picked up again, but it's actually I'm playing a different role. I'm gonna be playing a marine instead of a boxer. Oh, they, yeah. they cast me to play a boxer, you know, saw my videos, and now I'm gonna be marine. Well, um, if you need any tips on how marines? Yeah, I actually. I was a marine. That's that's one of my because I'm gonna be doing a lot of like fight scenes, so I'm gonna need your help on that. Um, and then there's some commercials that um. Fingers crossed. Ooh. Fingers crossed, but we'll see. Um, and then, yeah. So aside from surfing, I mean swimming, and you know Hawaii mm-hmm. Five O and that stunt work. What else did you do? I did a lot of surfing over there. I was really into it. Years okay. like 2014, 15, 16 ish. Okay. I was doing a lot of like local competitions. I did one year. I did the QS tour, which is the qualifying series tour, and I did some competitions and. Huntington, in Florida, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, Tahiti. And did you like pick up surfing in Hawaii, or did you do it prior to Hawaii? Well, let's say this: I had boogie board and and barely surfed growing up, but I was super strong in the water. Right. And You're then, a fish. and then I didn't really start like hardcore surfing till Hawaii. Okay. And because there's a difference in surfing in LA or just casual fun surfing, and then the mm-hmm. kind of surfing people do in Hawaii. Which it's, is more like it's, it's legit. like It's a lifestyle, yeah. like you're, le- you're surfing several times a day, you're like legit pushing your limits. Like it's a whole thing. It's like a professional okay. type sport. You know no, I, mean? I, I, I was yeah, a, yeah. I saw so, it. <laughs> that was like my other huge thing that I did in Hawaii. And I got to go, thank God for like 5-0. Having those three months off mm-hmm. each year allowed me to go on numerous, numerous surf trips to, right. you know, Indonesia, various, Central America, all That's over. That's fucking awesome. And, it, and that really helped. Yeah. So, why the switch? Why the move when, like, Hawaii's, like, Well, okay, so here's what was happening. I was supposed to go, I was traveling on the hiatus, mm-hmm. and I was supposed to go back for season 10 of 5-0. Is it still going on, by the way, this no, year? No, no, they just ended this year, okay. right before COVID. They okay. finished the season 10. Okay. Season 10 was their final season. Good for them. Yeah. <laughs> I was supposed to go back, start season 10 in July. I was in Italy. I had become fairly disenfranchised <coughs> with the whole industry uh-huh. because of like the amount of time required. And I was jaded by like working for CBS and working for a show like Y50 because yeah. ultimately like I feel like it was a shit show and it was yeah. like was I mean it, it I never I didn't I didn't hear about it until you told me that you were a It's not it. it's like not that it's just like cheese ball TV. Okay. This is my opinion, okay? Okay. And God bless all of us who worked There's on it. There's cheese ball God TV bless all though. of us who worked on it and made money. But to me it was a cheese ball thing and I was giving so much of my time to it. Mm-hmm. And in my mind I'm like all all we're doing is making this shit product that People waste their time watching. It's like providing no good. Yeah. I'm creating something that's no good. And I've done it for like close to 10 years. And okay. it takes massive amounts of time. Yes, it affords me a great lifestyle. But yeah. it's like ultimately you have to feel good about what you're right. creating and doing. Mm-hmm. Had I gotten into the business and worked on indie films, documentaries, and things that like meant things, yeah. maybe I would feel different. In fact, I probably would. But all I worked on was CBS shows, giant productions, like things that just like... I felt like didn't provide any value to humans, right. and I and 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 I just was like oh, done I with it. That. I was kind of wanted to do other things. I was okay. like, I did this for almost ten years. I'm ready. I'm good. I've been traveling. I was like, at, kind of in this weird place last summer. I didn't. Mm-hmm. And I was supposed to fly back from Italy to LA to go back to Hawaii, and I just didn't. I just stayed in LA. I was like, fuck it. I'm not. I'm called the That's producer. The point, yeah. Quit the show. Said I'm staying in Hawaii. I had my brother ship my car over. Put all my stuff and in your the garage. Still doing this thing out so there. my brother never left Hawaii. He got married and stayed there. Oh, yeah, nice. he loves it. So okay, so now you're in LA. Well, what's yeah. the plan? What's so, the move? I mean, I don't know. I had all kinds of plans and moves, but now that COVID is around, that, yeah, that has took, changed that's everything. That took a shit on everybody. But um, it's changed the way I think about like what's 
do, like, do I even want to be in a big city like this? Like, like, is it worth it? Because yeah. big crowds is not, it's what and, you're trying to avoid now. And while LA is like, you know, the hip, cool city of America, right. it's the one of the most Dangerous. locked down cities. And it, well, we're, it's the most populated. And, and so we might be getting another stay at home order and like, the, we don't even know if we're going to be working together that much We don't longer. know. We <laughs> just don't know what's happening. Yeah, it's it's a fucking weird world. And, I mean, there's there's a lot of pros that I saw come out of it. Like me, like, working on a podcast and, yeah, like, I working agree. on scripts and shit that I yeah. always said, I don't have time for it. No, which you do. Now I do, but it's like, it does affect people's pockets financially. So, mm-hmm. like, we're obviously not working with Luckily, we have outdoor seating. And that Luckily, was, we're working and making some money. We're not making yeah. as much as we used no. to and, like, whatever. But it could easily, next Friday or whenever, the governor could say, ah, restaurant shut down. Shut down. And we're like, but, but to go back, my point is, like, I've been thinking about leaving L.A. and getting out of the city again. Maybe oh, going back shit. to Hawaii, going to the country somewhere, get... Just get maybe getting out of the, getting out of the big cities, you know. So like, what are you gonna so switch from big city to like country life or like you know? suburban? Like, what, what no, are you no, trying to? No, no, not suburban. Like, like out of the city, like jungle country. Hawaii. Yeah, like go back to the Big Island of Hawaii, maybe. Okay. I mean, I don't blame you. Know, why, why not? This is the time to go. It's yeah. Retreat away from populated areas and whatnot. Man, the thing one thing I've learned in my life is. People are scared, but you can do anything. Yeah. You really don't need if much a to will, do. There's a will. There's a way. You can literally just uproot your life and do just go somewhere else and start over. It's not hard to do, especially in the United States. Yeah. I've done it numerous times. It's so. I mean, you just gotta be willing to kind of risk. You know. You know, when biologists are searching I mean, for it's life. It's easier to risk when you don't have like kids. Or I'm married. Exactly. You have to like set yourself up into that situation where you yeah. can be free, unshackled, unburdened. Yeah. You know? Do you ever plan on like settling down with um, Man, a significant there, other, there, a little JJ? There's there's <laughs> a, there's a surfer dude. I can't remember his name, but he's like he has a family and like he, he has a blog too. And, that's how he makes his money, but mm-hmm. his life is just like traveling with his kids. Like those kids were like well, that's traveling awesome. from this, the moment they were born. And I feel like travel is on the move. Movement, travel, change is so important to humans I, I and development. I, I do want to have kids, but I don't want to have kids until like I know that I'm going to be able to give them a life of like diversity and travel, travel and Culture, numerous culture and, exposures yeah. all of that and like so when I get to that point then I will have a kid and then I will take that kid all over this planet and, okay. then, and he'll be the most well adjusted kid ever he's gonna have the coolest fucking dad ever <laughs> 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 yeah my daddy he was a stunt double fucking surfed all over the place and just well traveled no I agree um, bringing kids into this world is just like a crazy thought just cause of all the shit yeah. that's going on but yeah, travel is super important. I'm so sad that we're not able to just fucking no. do it, especially when I had all this time off. But like to be confined at home is not something that Momo on the move mm-hmm. wants to do. Momo was on pause for a very long time. So we will see. see um, what happens. And if you do, if your next move is Hawaii, uh-huh. I'm Back. visiting. I'm visiting. Please. Definitely. And we're gonna go on these, these adventures, these two day hikes is what I wanna go on. Cause yeah. he's got stories behind the scenes that he told me about. I got more stories. Yeah, thank you, JJ, for coming thank on you, to Momo, my, for having me on. my podcast. I appreciate it. I yeah, feel no like we had a great conversation. Cheers. I think we talked about it all. Yeah. Until next time. We, we, we dusted on a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. We can dive deeper next time. We sprinkled. Um, yeah, and catch us next time on the next episode of Momo on the Move. Peace. Peace.